Welcome to this special session with Adamas and questions from the Polish Chambra. We really look forward to this. And uh, Jeff, is Adamas mm -hmm. going to be ready for this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we were in Poland in Warsaw a couple of years ago. And there was a very intense workshop. Very. Uh, we, it was called Angels and Aliens. I'll never forget that. The group of Polish Chambra and, and many other Chambra from sure. around Europe there. Yes, there were. And the intensity of that, uh, that entire weekend, uh, the beauty of it. And uh, we, you know, we've got a great group in Poland uh, of Chambra, plus an awesome publisher there, Derek with White Winds Publishing. And uh, he's done a tremendous amount of translations and publishing of, of right. the uh, Damas materials. The well, he Circle. collected the questions. And he, he, we want to thank uh, Derek for collecting the questions and kind of helping organize this whole thing. But um, you know, Adamus has a kind of a personal interest in Poland. He spent time there in his life as Saint Germain, and uh, he, he just feels that Poland is kind of caught in the middle of a lot of power games and has been for quite yes. a while. So. When uh, we were talking to Derek and uh, about doing another workshop, we said, you know, we'll do questions and answers from the studio here, and that's exactly why we're here today. Exactly. So you've got a list of questions that came in from Derek uh, from Chamber around Poland. Yeah, and and just so that for clarity, there's it's possible that there are a lot more questions than we can get to. But I'm going to read and work with Adamus on as many as possible, and I'm reading them in the exact order they were mm. sent to me. Good. So we're not making any judgments about any of the questions. They're just literally being read in the order that in I the received order. them. Good. I'm ready to start. How about, uh, before we do that, how about some breathing? That'll help me get connected with Adamus, and then we'll get right into it. It's my pleasure, and it's a good thing. So with that, I invite each of you to take a good deep breath, to really feel into the energies. Take a good deep breath and really open to this experience. Be with a good deep breath as we move forward looking for this new information from Adamus. Take the good deep breath of life. Allow yourself to be present, grounded, and here as we move forward. Be with that good deep breath of life, breathing and allowing and feeling. Be with the good deep breath as Adamus is here for us. Breathe and feel. I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. I'd like to personally welcome all the Chambra from Poland into this special gathering. And uh, we're taking just a moment here, uh, I'll talk for just a moment, as we kind of gather the energies together, uh, your energies, our energies. Uh, there, there's a lot going on here uh, at many different levels. and. As I stated when we were in Warsaw uh, a number of years ago, there's such an energetic battlefield in Poland. It's caught between, and has been caught between, world powers for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it, there's also battles taking place on, in the other realms. Uh, and for such a long time, Poland has uh, seemed to be right in the middle of all this, and that's why. Uh, with Caldra and Linda's consent, we agreed to do this special question and answer session. It's from questions that were sent in by Polish Chambra, but ultimately all of the answers and all of the energies contained here are for all Chambra. So let's take a deep breath and uh, all together, let's join together and really prepare the energies for this special session. So with that, Linda, let's uh, get right into the questions. Uh, I see that we have a lot of them. And yes, we do, sir. Them, so no more comments from me until we get into the questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we're ready. Here we go. In Pronos 2019, you stated that a person cannot and should not even try to forgive themselves because they will not succeed. Yes. That it can only be done through I am. It's quite a revolutionary thought 
Could you explain this a bit more? Ah, indeed. It actually goes uh, far beyond uh, the Pronos 2019. Uh, we, we talk about it extensively in our threshold sessions. Uh, we talk about the dragon, uh, and there's a very special name for it in threshold. And the fact that the dragon is really a, a very important part of you that comes in to bring up and release all, all of the hidden sh- guilts and shames that, that you have. And there are many. Even if your mind doesn't think you have uh, any, if you think you've cleared all that, there are guilts and shames that are a very deep level. Just the, the guilt and the shame of being trapped in human form. Uh, it's a very unnatural form that you're in, and, and not being able to get out just by willing it out. So, yes, indeed, we, we talk about the fact that you can't forgive yourself. Uh, the human simply can't. Uh, because, for one basic reason, the human doesn't believe themselves. Mm. They, they just don't believe it. You can try, you can say, I, I forgive myself, but the human still will harbor that guilt and shame. But when you can take it as a gift from the I Am, from, from your I Am, and receive that gift, and that's the challenge. Can you really receive it? Receive that beauty of the gift that there was never anything that was done wrong, nothing. Uh, then that has a profound effect on releasing so many old layers of guilt and shame. Uh, the the Church, the Catholic Church, um, adopted something from the Gnostics uh, right after the time the Gnostics came in, right after the time of Yeshua, and they had this same thing with releasing or or receiving uh, the forgiveness for guilt and shame. The the, the Church took it uh, in a different direction with the confession, and it was the priest. But even if you go to a priest, most people uh, really don't necessarily believe the priest can do that. So there is a harboring of very, very deep and old guilts and shames. And it's only through receiving the gift, uh, the forgiveness from the I Am. Uh, some people have a difficult time with this, as we've experienced in Threshold. They think that uh, forgiveness is, a, is an old religious concept, but understand that it first well, it came a long, long time ago, but in your contemporary society it first came from the the mysteries of the Gnostics, re- receiving that forgiveness, taking that gift from the I Am that says nothing, nothing was ever done wrong at all. So um, I appreciate the question. It's uh, good for clarification. Uh, and the human simply can't. I mean, you you can try, but you're not going to actually believe it. But when you can receive it as a gift from the I Am. Really take it in. Ah, profound effect. Thank you. Good, okay. good start. Yes. Okay. Number two. It's difficult not to notice that the chaos on Earth is intensifying. Which, as a matter of fact, you had often foretold. Tobias once said that at a certain point, the potential for destruction on Earth had been surpassed, and we were no longer threatened by apocalypse. Mm. It's. Is it still possible to support this statement today? Yes. Uh, the, the Earth is uh, chaotic and crazy, as you probably know, but you also have to realize that you're more sensitive than ever. So you're more aware than ever of the chaos. Uh, some people really don't, don't see it. They're not aware of it. Uh, they're kind of numb, but you're being a very sensitive human being. You're aware of it. The likelihood that Earth would blow itself up is very, very, very low. Uh, there used to be a lot of concern because of the nuclear uh, weapons that were on the planet. Uh, then there is a concern from an environmental standpoint, and ultimately a concern from the standpoint of uh, artificial intelligence. In terms of, uh, I guess you have to define uh, apocalyptic, but in terms of the Earth blowing up, uh, it simply the, the potential for that is so small, insignificant, it doesn't even count. The potential for doing harm to the environment um, is indeed higher, but eventually Gaia, uh, who will still be here for another few hundred years, uh, will overcome any of that uh, on her terms, not on human terms. The potential for 
chaos uh, and catastrophe from artificial intelligence, uh, it's not going to be destructive, it's not going to be wars, it'll simply be taking over the hearts and minds of humans. And what we're doing right now in our work together is preparing uh, the, you could say, the new earth within or not as part of, but we're preparing for that parallel new earth. So what you're really going to see in the times coming forward is old earth with limited consciousness kind of existing side by side with this, what we're calling the new earth. Now, it's interesting because a lot of even relatively enlightened beings aren't going to necessarily be aware that they're uh, how do you say, in a reality of the new earth. They're, they're still going to feel like it's just still one place, but the fact is there's these two operating in parallel, and you'll be able to, as, as realized beings, you'll be able to kind of shift back and forth between the two of them. Don't think in terms of two different physical places, but in two different uh, places of consciousness or awareness. But in, in answer to the question, uh, very, 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 very unlikely that the Earth is, uh, the humanity is ever going to blow itself up. They're just going to do all sorts of other strange things. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. In many places you talk about the different manifestations of Machio. Could you give at least five of the most important manifestations of this phenomena and briefly discuss them? <laughs> uh, Machio is... Uh, what I define as your spiritual BS, uh, spiritual uh, mis distraction. misleading or distraction of self. Uh, there's a number of, uh, there's hundreds of different levels of macchio or definitions or examples of macchio, but one is believing that things are outside of you, uh, believing that energy is outside of you. Um, and it often ends up in somebody uh, following gurus. Uh, uh, that's that's a wonderful part of Machio. Uh, the biggest one that I see, particularly as one goes into awakening and slightly post awakening, is that they're, they think it's the human that's doing the enlightenment or realization. The human kind of takes it over and thinks that they're doing it. Uh, which, which is kind of interesting. Uh, ultimately, they'll realize that that's not really truth at all. But uh, what, what happens here when the human tries to take it over, they actually limit it. They, they limit the, the journey into realization. They fashion it in a human way, and uh, therefore it's really not all that pleasant of an experience. It's not the human doing enlightenment. The human can experience what going from uh, limitation, the human form, into realization is like, but they can't lead it. Uh, this is really coming from, from the I am. It's part of a natural process. So that's perhaps the biggest machio uh, that, that I encounter with people thinking, they, they're thinking that they're doing it. Uh, other forms of machio is, are when people are simply imitating other, um, other spiritual teachings. Uh, they don't develop their own, they don't go inside for their own, they're, they're mimicking or, or they're imitating uh, other things. They'll take a little bit from here and a little bit from there and a little bit from there, and they'll call themselves spiritual. Uh, but they're really just, um, they're just imitating. So uh, it's a big form of macchio. Uh, the other form that I see quite a bit is when people associate power with anything to do with uh, spiritual um, awakening and, and coming into mastery. So they'll literally try to get more power, or they'll assume that there's power in it, and that will lead to things like uh, a focus on trying to be wealthier or healthier or any of these other things, uh, very, very human qualities. And realization has nothing to do with that. Realization isn't about bettering the human life. Many people would say, then why do it? Well, because first of all, it's a natural process. Secondly, there comes a point where you're going to transcend the human condition anyway. So you're not here to try to perfect it, to try to make yourself younger or wealthier. However, that being said, leads to the, the next form of Machio. 
there was a tremendous misunderstanding about consciousness and energy. And it has been that way as long as I can remember. But humans simply don't understand what consciousness is. Uh, simply, it's awareness. And awareness right now for humans can be limited. And as you uh, come into your mastery, it opens up and expands. Without the understanding of what energy is, uh, it leads to a tremendous amount of distraction and abuse, misuse, and misdirection on what is actually a beautiful process of coming into realization. So I would say the other, the other macchio, the other big one, is the misconceptions about energy. I see that many New Agers, spiritual types, call themselves energy workers or energy masters, but yet they have no concept of the fundamentals of energy. Energy, quite simply, does not come from out there. Energy is all within. Energy responds to consciousness. Energy is not a force. Energy has no power. Energy has no agenda. Energy is simply there as the song of the soul. Energy at its core is a communication. That's all it is. So it's not there to move objects. It's not there to uh, do healing or any of that. It's simply the song of the soul. So that's another big form of Machio that I see. And uh, I, I could give hundreds of other examples of Machio, but ultimately, Machio is a spiritual distraction. Everyone goes through it, uh, everyone, uh, without exception. It's just uh, right now, at least, it's part of, the, of the, the journey, so to speak. Some get really caught up in it, uh, where it will well, take them lifetimes, literally lifetimes, to come out of that dead end of Machio that they're in. Others learn to laugh at their Machio pretty early on, and they realize it was just a distraction. And they get on with coming to their own truth with their own energy and their own mastery. That's it. There are no gurus out there. There's no magic formula or secret answer. There are truly no mysteries uh, other than <laughs> what, what is not already there and obvious. Uh, everyone goes through the spiritual distractions, and we do literally talk about it all the time at the Ascended Masters Club, how uh, all of us got distracted along the way. That, that's Machio. Uh, so don't feel bad about your Machio. Learn to laugh at it, and let's move on. Thank you. Okay. What was your personal contact with the dragon's energy before your realization? I tell the story of my interaction with, uh, with the dragon uh, at the Threshold Gatherings, I, and it's a, it's a beautiful story, and I've told it many times, and dear Linda Visa is probably a little bit tired of it, but I'll give the very, very short version. I was uh, off on my own, knowing it was the last few years of my life on the planet. I was in northern Germany. I had given away all of my riches and all of my goods, other than a few dogs and, and a few things that were necessary for my sustenance. I was working on uh, a few books at the time, including The Time of Machines, uh, the very book that uh, I refer to quite often now. And one day, uh, one fine uh, morning, while having my tea – I was not that big of a coffee drinker back then, but I've learned to through you and Caldra – but I was having my tea, and suddenly I became very, very ill, uh, vomiting, uh, sweating. And next thing I knew, I was on the floor. I, I couldn't move. All my, my bones seemed to be frozen in place. And I felt great fear, which uh, I hadn't felt in, in ages. This came to be my uh, encounter with the, the clarity of the dragon. And I laid on, uh, on the floor for several days uh, in, in this miserable, wretched state of being until I realized what was going on, that it was the dragon coming in for my clearing. Now, part of my machio was to think that I was um, a true master, and that had no issues uh, whatsoever. And this dragon showed me what my issues were. And the biggest one that the dragon showed me was my own um, seduction with power, hmm. 
which is why I talk so often about power. And my own seduction with power, and I had several more um, not so pleasant encounters with the dragon. Uh, but then I finally realized that the dragon was not an enemy. The dragon was not here to tear me apart. The dragon was simply here to help me release those last things I had in guilt, held in guilt and shame in my own life. I came to be very, very good friends with my own dragon, as all of you will at some time as well. Thank you. Good questions. Okay. You've sort of answered part of this one, but it's the next one. You've spoken about your release from the crystal several, t several times. That once was, or twice. Yeah, once or twice. You have also commented, uh, you've also mentioned the enlightenment of Tobias and Cthulhu. What was your realization? I remember that you wrote a few sentences on this subject in some book that it occurred somewhere in a forest. Could you share this experience with me? You probably did not stay on Earth after that, or maybe I'm mistaken. <laughs> My realization was a bit different, uh, not really quite as dramatic as uh, Tobias or Kuthumi's. Uh, you have to understand that um, I spent uh, a long time in my crystal. I, I say 100,000 years. It could have been 10 minutes for all, for all you know, but it seemed like 100,000 years. There I learned, there, in that crystal, I had no place to go but inside. Mm. I spent a tremendous amount of time on my in my inner being, going through my own hell, uh, my own red lion, until I finally realized a very simple uh, realization that I got myself in there. I couldn't blame anyone else, that therefore I could get myself out. I was what you would call a relatively enlightened being at that point. I had no need to come back to Earth for any other lifetimes. I had no lessons to learn. But I had a passion for one thing, and that passion was to help show other people the way out. Uh, the fact that you get trapped in your own prison, whatever it is, uh, relationships, karma, health, just being trapped in human consciousness. And I made a commitment to myself, uh, my passion was to show other humans how to free themselves. And the commitment was also I would never interfere with anybody else's life or their journey or their choosings. However, if they came to me, uh, I would show them what some call, call the mysteries, but I would show them the way out. It doesn't mean denying or cursing the human state, but saying that you can be both human and divine at the same time. I really didn't have to come back to the Earth. I had no karma at that point. Uh, I didn't, um, I didn't have a need for any other fulfillment, but I came back to Earth and spent many, many lifetimes uh, back on the planet, generally uh, setting up some type of mystery school, usually in remote areas, and people would just find their way to those schools. And that was my passion, and for so long now, I've taught, not just under the, the name of uh, Saint-Germain, but uh, several other names as well. I've taught in the lifetimes. At one time I was a rabbi, uh, but kind of considered a rebel rabbi, uh, and it did many other lifetimes. That was, that was uh, really my passion, but again, I didn't have to go through a great big realization. Um, I'm trying to think how to say this. It, I was realized, but didn't choose to be fully realized of my realization. But in a sense, isn't that the way it is for all of you? I mean, you're realized. You didn't have to come back here for this lifetime. You're just now realizing that you're realized. So I finally, it was more of a decision to say, I don't need to spend any more lifetimes on the planet. In my last lifetime, I'd done a lot of traveling run a lot of mystery schools and then uh, eventually shut them all down. Spent a lot of time with the, uh, the, the leaders, all th uh, the political and the church leaders throughout Europe. And I finally said that that's it. And when I did, when I took these last two years uh, to myself in uh, the north of Germany, it was kind of like finally accepting my realization. But it was interesting because I wasn't out there with anybody else. 
I rarely if ever saw anybody. So even then, it's a different than what you're doing. You're you're going into realization, and you're still amongst people. Most of you will be. Uh, some of you will choose to go off by yourself, but uh, that's the big challenge. And how do you stay here amongst others? How do you be that light for others uh, and have your realization? Uh, so my commitment continues, uh, even though I'm on the other side now. But to be here to help all those who choose their true free being uh, now. I have no desire, nor do I hope uh, Crimson Circle ever has a desire, to try to go out and teach this to everyone. They need to come to you, uh, and they will come to you, the ones who are ready, whether they find you on your internet or whether they literally show up at the front door of the studio, they'll come to you. So my realization wasn't lightning bolts, uh, uh, or it wasn't a case of uh, like Kuthumi, you know, being in a uh, comatose state for a couple of years, or like Tobias being thrown in jail and feeling like he was forsaken by God. I just, mine was more. I'm, I'm ready. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Okay. From a reliable source, I have information that Saint Germain has returned to Earth and currently resides in Austria. Could you confirm or deny this? Is it a rumor? Do you at all predict a return to this planet? Mm. Uh, no, I, I it will not, have not, and should not return to this planet in human form. Uh, I, I have more fun working with Chambra uh, in this way. Um, there's a lot of rumors and myths about Saint Germain, and uh, I, I have to admit, I actually kind of initiate some of them, or, or at least uh, prompt them a little bit. Um, I do, uh, on many occasions, show up back on the planet um, for a day or two at a time. Uh, I'm not living in Austria, although I have manifested myself in Austria and, and other places. I, I used to enjoy long walks uh, in, in Paris, along the river, uh, just uh, particularly late at night. Uh, not so much anymore. There's something about the energy that's, uh, that's changed there, uh, although I do drop in from time to time. Um, I show up in different places at different times, but uh, in terms of being embodied, no. In terms of staying for any length of time, no. Or having one country of origin, absolutely not. If there's any place that I call home uh, in a me not being physical, but if there's any one place that I call home right now, uh, it would be right here in Colorado at the Crimson Circle Connection Center. Uh, as a matter of fact, dear Linda and Caldra, see, when you're not here, I go back into your apartment oh, in the back and, yes, and of course. sleep. Yes. Lovely. <laughs> no, I, ooh, I'm flattered. And, and I do love uh, your new setting in, in Kona and in, in the islands. Uh, I visited there as Mark Twain. Um, and, and truly fell in love with the place. But no, I'm not manifest on Earth. But it leads me to an important point. Uh, when I came to Crimson Circle, I chose the Adamus moniker, the Adamus nickname, so to speak, on purpose, because I wanted to differentiate the work we're doing uh, from all the rest. And there are many, many St. Germain, um, I'll call them imitators, um, what I talked about in our very first question about the, a lot of imitation. Uh, there's a lot of Saint Germain Macchio out there. Mm. Now, I have one agreement with one group to do this work on the planet right now, and the agreement is with Crimson Circle, and only one messenger uh, with Caldra, and you supporting and assisting. Otherwise, you get different channelers. The message gets changed and diluted. And also, I hold you and uh, Calder highly accountable for the clarity and the purity of the work. Um, but I, I chose this Adamus to separate it from many around the world who are claiming. Now, I do a few channels with a few people, not full time like I do with you, but a few others around the planet right now, uh, none in the United States or Canada to bring forth some messages for a different group of people, but it's not regular um, channeling like what you're doing. Uh, once in a while, I'll bring in a message, but I've been a little disappointed both in those channelers and in the overall 
uh, awareness or uh, kind of the the Saint Germain name because so many have have actually uh, distorted it and misused it. So uh, my commitment is right here with Shambra with all of you, and that's it. Wow! Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I, I don't know if I would choose Austria. I, I love Austria, but I don't know if I would choose that hmm. right now. Hmm. Okay. Quite rarely do you mention love. Yes. The exception was the book Secrets of Love. Hmm. What is the role of love on the road to realization and afterwards in the context of new energy? Is there any place at all for love in the new energy? Mm. Uh, there are issues with love. Uh, big issues with love. And part of the issue with love is it's been, it's like so many other things uh, for humans. It's so beautiful. Uh, sex, amazingly beautiful. You know, and, and sex doesn't have to be physical. I could buy that. Yeah. Um, I was looking for her reaction. Sex is a beautiful thing. It's two humans melding and intertwining their energies, uh, taking down all their barriers, becoming uh, in union with each other. I, I don't want to say in oneness, but uh, they become in union, uh, so close together uh, that you're within them, they're within you, and not necessarily physically. But look what's happened to sex. Humans have taken it and turned it into into slavery, into pornography, into filth, into dirt, into most of the mo the majority of the traffic on the internet up until recently was pornography. So I bring that up because love is kind of the same way, mm. and love by itself is such a beautiful thing. Love is the total acceptance of another being, total acceptance for everything that they are. And in that acceptance, when, when you're like that with another, it leads to incredible energetic intimacy at a level that uh, doesn't occur very often in one's life. But intimacy, your energy with their energy, your song of the soul harmonizing with their so soul's song of the soul, the two energies harmonizing and coming together. It's a beautiful thing, but it's been corrupted uh, to the degree where I don't really use the word love anymore. Uh, it's been corrupted by uh, parents who claim to love their children and then beat them, uh, by uh, two people who uh, claim to love each other but then harm each other. Love has become the, the grounds for energy stealing. Mm. Uh, and it's sad to see because it is such a beautiful, uh, it was created here on earth. God didn't know love until humans began experiencing it. Uh, people talk about uh, uh, love uh, that's the, the core of God. God had no concept of love until human experienced it. But for me it's been disappointing, and I'm getting way ahead of myself here. But the questions come up, so it's, it deserves an answer. As we go forward with Shambra in these next years, and you become embodied, realized beings on the planet, we're going to actually, one of the things we're going to be doing together is going beyond love. Uh, we won't be criticizing love or diminishing it, but there is something beyond that, and it's something that many of you are going to experience. And your human mind could not even imagine it right now. So don't even try. Don't think you know what I'm talking about, because it's not about thinking. Once we're in this state of true transcendence uh, and integrated as the Merlins on the planet, and once you've adjusted and settled your energy in with your realization, but still existing in uh, a lower consciousness vibration of the planet. Once, once you really adjusted to that, we're going to go into uh, this next level um, beyond love. Uh, let's just call it that for right now, beyond love. And I'm not even going to try to explain it right now, because um, my explanation wouldn't do justice to it. But uh, 
that is one of my passions uh, in the things I'd love to work with Chambra on, Beyond Love, where it is so pure. I, I'll make this statement. Calder is double checking me, and I'm saying, no, it's, I mean what I'm saying. This thing, Beyond Love, uh, there's no comparison to on the planet right now. You can't relate it to anything else, but it is so pure that it melts diamonds, le- melts them, not, not blows them away. But uh, I don't want to say anything more about it, but that's one of the things we're going to be working on together. Okay. Excellent question. And I'm not, I'm not adverse to love, and I have loved many and been loved by a few in the past. Uh, I, I just find one of the saddest things on the planet is the abuse and the degradation of one of the most beautiful experiences two humans can ever have. I'm not pointing the finger or laying fault on anybody, but it it has been terribly abused. Okay. So I don't talk about it a lot. There are, I'm well, sorry. Everything I you're saying is true. I mean, we can feel it. I don't talk about it a lot, and I see many who are oh, the the spiritual group, uh, what uh, uh, Calder now calls the uh, Sedona Mafia, uh, that it's all about love, but but. They've been burned by love, and, and their love is controlled. Right. Uh, they use love in a in a power way, a- and they say, "I love you," but what I see in their energy is, "I want to control you." So I, I've really moved away from love because we're, we're not a love crowd here. We're we're a we're a compassionate crowd, and there's a big difference. I understand. Uh, I can hear. And, that. and not, I'm not saying I don't mistranslate this energetically or in your words. I'm not saying not to love other people, but I'm saying I don't think it's the highest form of experience on the planet. I know it's not. And we're going to go beyond love in, in these next few years. Okay. Yeah. And love, sex, they're all tied in together, power, energy, the whole thing. It's all, it's all uh, kind of um, a big tangled mess. It is. That's yeah. true. And uh, not to keep going on and on and interrupting you, but uh, let me put it this way, just in case any of you are booing and hissing me right now. The biggest reason for people having karma, which draws them back to the planet for lifetime after lifetime, is love. Mm. Is love. Beyond anything else, it's the thing that sucks people right back in, even if they're not ready to come back in for another lifetime. It is the abuse and misuse of the energies of love that bring back about 68% of anybody who's coming back to the planet was because of the imbalances of love. Now, that's why I'm not, uh, we're not love-oriented here. I can imagine that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Most, relation- <laughs> <laughs> Most relationships are, are based on the uh, a karma of love. Uh, and most relationships on the planet now are people who have been together before, and they got too many issues to work out, and they come back together. I, it's not really love. It's, it's bondage. Uh, and, but, but yet they call it love. And, and then there's this union of marriage that says, uh, we're going to be together forever. That's a long time. That's a long time. So, uh, in a few years, we'll go beyond love. We'll melt. Uh, and, and Calder's double checking me again. No, we're going to melt diamonds. That there's a symbolic meaning. You'll, you'll understand. I get it. But yeah. Okay, you're always over the top for me. <coughs> okay, I hear but it. But do you love me? Yes. You should say no. Well, you, you're, I, I love Kaldra, and so, I mean, what am I supposed to do? I'm going to stuck with both of you in that <laughs> <You're> regard. Stu- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's go beyond love. Okay. Uh, you and Kaldra, not you and me. Well, no, you and me, too. Let's move on to the next question. You're the one that got stuck in the crystal. Trying to be a gentleman. Thank you. Okay. You're kind of lovable. Okay, so people from the so-called personal development environment are fiercely committed and they are truly care about interchange. They attend different kinds of workshops, read books, look for answers, and seek advice from their elders. For years, many 
have been undergoing their transformation, and it seems as if there is no end. Determination provides an idea of fulfilling and discovering one's place in the world, yet for some reason, it's still not happening, as if the moment of real change is always around the corner. Why is this so, and from where does it arise? Is it a matter of time, grace, greater impact, surrender, patience, or maybe we have been fooled by further spiritual promise? Hmm. Uh, spirituality and religions are, are great uh, feeding grounds uh, for, uh, for egos and business and power and everything else, and it's done under the, the banner of heaven. Uh, it's a great game, and you know, it provides a, a degree of um, realization, uh, a degree of consciousness, but then it, it provides a lot of people with some values uh, and morals in their lives and an awareness that there is something beyond. But then it comes to a screeching halt with all the rules and the regulations and the things you have to do and the hierarchies of the organization. One of the things that Tobias did in uh, setting up working with all of you in Crimson Circle said, no hierarchy uh, whatsoever, no levels that you have to attain. That, that's, uh, that's sadistic in a way. Uh, and no rules and regulations other than uh, it's all within you. Uh, now, I, I have interjected one along the way. I'm really not a fan at all of these, um, what do you call them, SSRI uh, medications um, because of the effects that they have on the mind. But other than that, you can smoke, you can drink, you can fornicate, you can do whatever you want, but realize that it's all within you. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to a statement I made earlier, and this applies to any spiritual group, any religious group. Until there is the understanding, uh, a very simple understanding, of what consciousness is, uh, and it's the, the I exist, mm. and what energy is, you could teach all day long, but they're never going to learn how to apply it for themselves. Uh, and, and again, yes, many, Many teachers, many organizations have brought people along the way, but then it comes to a screeching halt uh, before they ever get to the doorway to realization, uh, being guarded by the dragon, because there's limitations, and, and because generally they aren't taught that everything's within you. Don't look to me to the answers. Look to yourself. I'll tell you that the answers are within you, but don't look to me for the answers. I stress uh, with Shambhur, you are sovereign beings. You are free beings. We are not oneness. We are, we are not, um, what do you call it, the Borg. We are not. Uh, you are all free and sovereign beings. So, so often uh, a, a spiritual religious organization has been infected uh, with the um, sexual virus. Uh, you can look at it. You look at any organization, is there an imbalance of masculine feminine energy? I mean, is it all controlled by men or, or women? Is there an imbalance in the abundance energy? Are they always looking for money uh, and you pay your way to salvation? Uh, look to see if there's um, imbalances in the way they use words, like love. Do they talk love but not show love, not really give love? So. Uh, uh, Calder's arguing with me right now. Kick Why? him out of here. Because uh, I'm going to make a statement that there's, there are so many spiritual organizations that are limited in what they teach, uh, very, very limited. Until they understand energy and consciousness, they're, they're limiting themselves, and oftentimes the perversion occurs within the organization, and they might have had a wonderful um, uh, beginning desires. Uh, you know, they might have had won a wonderful intent at the beginning, but the energy gets perverted when they don't understand energy and consciousness. Then they go back to some of the old ways: power, money, sex are, are the obvious things that show up. Then the let's say that particular leader of that organization has to keep pushing more and more and more, uh, getting more, um, interjecting more discipline, more fanaticism, and less, so much less that it's already within you. Just let it come forth. Right.
So, um, and I've threatened before uh, to reveal names, but um, Calder is very set against that. Yeah, you need but to not do that. Why? We don't have to know. We know. Well, I'm honoring Calder and you now. Thank you. But uh, there are many who are out there teaching and uh, things that are really quite false. Uh, and uh, should they not be held accountable at some level? It comes back on them one way or another. It, it comes back on them, but we're coming to the point on this planet when though, even those things need to be revealed. Okay. But later, Calder's panicking right now. <laughs> yeah, later. So, yeah. So uh, I'll re I'll refrain. I'll, I'll hold myself back. For but, now, thank you. Uh, sometimes, uh, yes, I'm Calder saying, but you're, um, you're an ascended being. You get angry. I don't call it anger, but um, but it's more intolerance for some of the crap that's being put out there. And a lot of it's a trap. A lot, a lot of it is yeah, yeah. almost an intentional trap to get you into a actually less empowerment and, and uh, more and more donations. And uh, you know, I, I will name one group because Calder <gasps> is very familiar with it. Calder is very familiar <gasps> with it. <laughs> Calder is very familiar <gasps> with it. A group that Calder actually was uh, a part of uh, at one time. You've got to get a close up of dear Linda Visa. She's panicking right now. Don't um, go there. But that group is <gasps> the Mormons. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Tobias did a, a whole session about them. Uh, and <sighs> the original intent actually was, was quite good. But then it got very, very distorted uh, along the way. And it's not about, and you know that, that religion. It's not about empowerment of the person. It's about what is good for the Mormon Church. It's not about coming to realize the God within you. It's uh, you have to be in service to God. It's all about how much money you're giving, what level you're at, and how conformed you are to their ways. Now, I'm not saying they're bad people, but the organization itself is energetically corrupt and imbalanced. Uh, it, it attracts people who kind of need that, I guess you could say. They need that uh, limitation and discipline in their life. But teaching real values of the God within, no. God, their God is so far out there, it's un unattainable. Uh, it, it's what they're teaching is basically human law, not spiritual guidance. And uh, they become very incestuous. Uh, I'm not speaking, you know, from a biological standpoint, but energetically incestuous. And uh, but yet, they have such power in, in with over the the members. Uh, nobody questions. You're not allowed to question. And it's an example of a spiritual organization that I don't mind talking about. Well, there's a huge amount of corruption coming out from the Let Catholic Church with way. the priests being called out now for pedophiles and people coming forward and True. revealing it, and they're under a lot of scrutiny now. True. Uh, and and even, with, even with the uh, Church of the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, uh, I know Joseph Smith, the, the, the founder, uh, and no, he's not back on earth right now. He is appalled at what's going on. It was never his intent for it to become so human and so controlled. Uh, so uh, that's one example. Okay. So I got that one by. Okay. And, and as you know, Caldra. My only issue is that you're singling out one when it's, it's more than Oh, a I'll be happy to name others. At this point, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, poor Caldra is going to choke to death here. Uh, and I mentioned the, the Latter-day Saints because the Mormons, because uh, Caldra was involved with Joseph Smith uh, and the, at the very early beginnings of the church. Uh, so he's very, very aware of it. It's part of his past. Mm. So that one I don't mind mentioning. Okay. All Good. right. So you speak from experience. Yeah. Okay. We all know that governments in a given country are the resultant consciousness of the general public. Yes. There's a fierce struggle between opposing political forces in Poland. Mm -hmm. I know that the primary teaching for you and other master teachings are centered on such things as allowing as well as the low wall, mm -hmm. sure, so rather sure. standing on the side rather than getting involved. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, do you have any tips for Schomburg in Poland or for Poles in general with regard to having more influence on what's occurring in our country? Mm. Uh, 
Yes, I do. I'm very, very clear about that. And I don't care if you're in Poland or Iceland or Australia or anywhere. Right now, uh, stay away from politics. I mean, you observe uh, if you want, check the news out and things, but stay away from politics. Uh, it, it is uh, energetically, um, I don't want to say, dan- Calder is going to say dangerous, energetically uh, seductive, uh, has nothing to do with your realization. Is going to hold you back, actually, and you've got to realize there's no right or no wrong. Uh, you know, you take up arms for one side, assuming that they're right, uh, because you're taking up arms for them. But neither side is right or wrong. Uh, right now, you're just seeing a tremendous uh, polarity on the planet, and it's going to go to almost every country. Uh, tremendous polarity. It's part of humanity's ways of working out the differences. That sometimes you've got to go to the polarity uh, before you can come back to consensus uh, and, and then move forward. So the polarity is um, it's like the light and the dark energy. You know, they're battling. Uh, they're, they're, they're trying to resolve something. And what comes in, when light and dark are battling like that against each other, what tends to come in is an outside uh, energetic force that basically uh, changes the dynamics of this battle, because neither dark or light can ever win, ever. For a while it could appear that dark is winning, a while that light is winning, but they never really can. But suddenly you have this other element that comes in that is, you can call it what you want, divinity, consciousness, light. that literally uh, will cause a even more polarity for a while. Uh, it's kind of what you're seeing on the planet right now. And it will almost intensify that uh, fight, and eventually what happens is both the, the light and the dark fall over in exhaustion. They stop that old fight and, and eventually kind of move on. And that's what ha- is happening with energies in Poland right now, but also all over the world. So please don't get involved in, in politics. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a loser's game on the planet right now. And there's no right or wrong side. Some of you might uh, be more oriented towards a liberal viewpoint or some towards a more conservative. Neither one is right or wrong. So let it be. Let them do their thing while you do your thing. Uh, I know sometimes you get very passionate about things, but it's not what you're here on the planet right now, not for those things. You're here for something else. You're here as a standard of that light that will eventually get some of the light and dark energy on the planet uh, moving up. Okay. Moving on. <clears throat> In the material, angels and aliens, yes. you stated that Poland has been exploited by other countries Mm -hmm. for centuries. Sometimes it went on overtly, sometimes it was hidden. Mm -hmm. I have the impression that this situation has not changed at all, that there are still many forces that want to clip our wings. There is also a mention of the phenomenon of the depopulation of Slavs. What is this, why is this occurring? Is it because we have ancient Slavic origins? Is it because we have a special role to play and not everybody is pleased about it? How do we oppose it? Uh, For a very, very long time, uh, Poland has been kind of at the crossroads of uh, the powers of of Europe, um, particularly that of Germany and Russia, but uh, also Austria and uh, many of the other uh, countries around. Poland's right at the middle. It's kind of the, I would say it's like a balance point. And uh, they've been taken over by those countries. They've been abused by those countries. Now, I'll make, a, I'll make this relatively simple. For a number of reasons, but none that are really worth bringing up right now, the, those who are of Polish ancestry, and I differentiate that between somebody who's of ancestry and somebody who's just living there, but those who are of that ancestry have a very, very old uh, guilt. And they allow themselves to be put down, abused, taken advantage of, and literally, figuratively raped because of that guilt. That chain of guilt and abuse has been going on for 
many, many, many centuries, a long, long time. It's passed down from, uh, from parents to children, and then from the children to their children to their children. Nobody questions it. Nobody says, why is all this happening here? They just take it as their fate and destiny. But it's really a very deep-seated guilt uh, in the country itself. The, the reason why it occurred isn't that important, but what is important now, and the reason why I in love doing this session and, and appreciate uh, all of you who are connected to it, is that somebody's got to break that chain. And once one link is broken, then the others will start breaking as well. In other words, as you release any guilt and shame in your life, this whole dragon thing, you come to uh, your realization as a standard in Poland, you're going you're to break that chain. You're going to cast a light for others. Uh, it's going to break this very, very old uh, issue of the country of abuse uh, uh, of any place in Europe right now. You're the country of abuse. A lot of you thought that uh, there was a general feeling in Poland that uh, when there was the, the Polish Pope that it would basically wipe out a lot of this, uh, this old, uh, the old energy issues in Poland. You, you thought uh, it would be rising above that. And while it did bring a lot of attention to Poland and it did do quite a bit of healing, ultimately, actually, it made the issue even deeper. Uh, or worse. Uh, it, it laid another level of guilt uh, on Poland. The reason why I love the work that all of you are doing there is as you come into realization, you're going to weaken those old links and you'll eventually break them and you'll get Poland out of a, a bondage it's been in. The, the, country is, um, the country serves too many other masters. Uh, other mm. countries, other now businesses, and now uh, unfortunately Poland has uh, become kind of a, a den for um, uh, the low energies of um, uh, crime and drugs and violence and manipulation. Um, that's why you're there right now, and that's why some of you have considered moving, but you keep feeling drawn back there because it's time to break those chains. Uh, I spend a lot of time myself in Poland, in my lifetime as St. Germain, and a lot of time there, uh, and we operated several mystery schools there, but we spent a lot of time uh, trying to get over this, all these old issues, but uh, the powers that be back then and now actually wanted to hold on to those old issues to keep the people and the country in bondage, in slavery to to others. Mm. So. I'm continuing to read these in the exact order yes. that they were given to me. Okay, once during one of the shouts, you said that it's easier to achieve enlightenment alone than in a relationship. I'm a Chambra. Did I, did I say that? Probably. Yes, I did. I'm a Chambra, thus I consider myself a pioneer of new consciousness. It's not, is it not so that I can go beyond this paradigm? choose my own way, and trust that even when in an intimate relationship, I can achieve rela realization. Yes, absolutely. I, I didn't say it was undoable. I just said it's more difficult. Uh, and if I, had, if I was back on the earth right now, I was Shambra, uh, I would choose to do it uh, without the relationship. Or I would have the type of relationship that um, allowed me a tremendous amount of freedom. Um, uh, finding a partner, uh, a compatible partner, is the, is the hard thing. Although I will state that there are actually a lot of Chambra couples around the world, uh, uh, man and wife, uh, man and man, woman and woman, a lot of Chambra couples had have an agreement uh, before they ever came in that one of them would go for enlightenment while the other one kind of stood as a tether. Uh, they, they wouldn't get all involved in it. They would they would be agreeable to their partner going into it, but they would kind of be the uh, placeholder. Then when their partner came to realization, then they would kind of uh, use that as the light to get to their own. 
So there was, uh, there was quite a few Schomburg that have that agreement that one will go first, then the other one will come after. Uh, my statement wasn't against relationships. It was just saying it's really harder doing it in a relationship because now you've got to, in your, your own uh, coming to realization, you've got to put up with Caldra and, and his uh, idiot. He doesn't like this, but that's okay. His idiosyncrasies, his, um, the pressures that there are on him and his life and both your lives, uh, it'd be easier to do it on your own. Maybe not as enjoyable, but easier. He has a spell on me. Yeah, well, that's why I say it'd be better to do it on your own. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know I adore him. Okay. At <coughs> least you didn't say you love him. I do. Next question. I do love I him. I know. But we're going to go beyond love. I'm fine with that, too. Okay. Okay. Not only in Poland does the new mobile technology, telephone technology of five... Okay. Let me go back there. Not only in Poland does the new mobile tech, telephone technology of 5G, whose frequency will be similar to those used by the cells in the human body to communicate, raise great concern. This can cause an increase in the rates of cancer and other serious disease. How does one protect themselves against it? How does one protect themselves against other such threats? For example, geoengineering or weather manipulation. Will the forming of body consciousness protect us from the influence of such things? Good question, actually. Uh, there's this whole debate about uh, your 5G technology. It's a, a wireless technology. And it's, yes, it's getting closer and closer to a frequency range of the cells, but that's really not the issue. Uh, is, uh, the, the frequency modulation is not the issue. The issue is how humans are using it. Uh, I'd be more concerned about that. And, and as I've talked about extensively, uh, there's, uh, in that, that coming a time, this is the time when humans are going to be uh, relying on their devices. Uh, you know, and for years, for long before we ever went into Pronost, I've never been a fan of the mobile phones, uh, or what some of you call your handies, uh, because I saw what was coming. Uh, and I also found it extremely uh, rude and distracting for somebody's handy to go off right during the middle of a workshop. What I saw, and the reason why I've never been a fan, is because I see where they're going to control your life. Uh, I mean, they already do in many ways. Uh, how many times have you left your mobile phone somewhere and gone out and then panicked because you didn't have it right with you. How many of you have it at your nightstand? Uh, you have to have it that close when you're sleeping. Forget about the frequency modulation. It's more about the energy dynamics of having that little device that tells you when to get up, when to eat, when to take a shower, how to, where, how to drive to work. And you say, oh, no, but it's really nice because it tells me, you know, if there's uh, bad traffic, I take a different route. But it's still telling you how to drive to work and when to take a break, and when to have sex, and for how long to have sex, and, and there'll be sexometers built into your, your apps pretty soon. Oh boy. A and uh, it's going to run your life. That's the real issue, not, not uh, the frequency modulation. So uh, the question uh, for yourself is, uh, that, it, that I ask you is, is it okay, or is it, is it okay to have uh, one of these devices? Well, certainly, but how are you using it? Uh, are you using it to run your life, or are you using it for its conveniences? Uh, that combined with the coming of your free energy light body I into your being, you're, you're not going to get cancer off of 5G rays or uh, frequencies and uh, anything like that. It just You don't even need to worry about stuff like that anymore. But understand balance in your life. If you're going to use a device like that, let it serve you rather than you serving it. Okay. Period. Very good. Good. Once long ago, you stated that we enter our realization, we will be able to take our body with us like Athumi or Yeshua did. Mm -hmm. Now you state that we all must die. How is it possible? I don't want to die and leave my body here. Thank you for your response. Yeah, yeah I think it's a little bit of a misunderstanding. You're going to have the choice, the option, uh, when you die, uh, to take your physical body with you. Uh, I mean, it can just disappear like mine did. It just no traces left. Some of you are going to say, that's too much work. I'll leave it here. Uh, it doesn't make a difference one way or the other. There's no glory in taking it with you or leaving it behind. It, it doesn't really matter. 
And so I think the question here is really more about are you going to die? Uh, well, that depends on the definition. I would say you're more dead now than you're going to be when you leave the physical body. Wow. Uh, well, it's true. Uh, but the question is, uh, are you going to die? Well, you're going to transition. You're going to go beyond the physical, and you're going to have such wonderful uh, memory, kind of an essence of the physical, that you'll be able to reappear uh, in what seems to be a physical body, uh, but it's really not. That's um, like kind of like a hologram. So, are you going to die? Uh, well, you're going to transition. You're going to. You're going to. Your body will um, either integrate with you, or you're going to leave it behind. But it, when we talk about death, there's such a misunderstanding of it. It's um, it's really quite simple. Right. I mean, it's really very very simple, and. You don't cease to exist. You just continue in a, in another form. Okay, thank you. Good. Drew Marker, death really addresses that. Mm -hmm. Okay, what will life look like after changing my body from the one I have to the body of the new energy? Can I still continue to function in this world? If so, how will this look in practice? Will the human body disappear? And if not, should I? already transfer my bank account and house to my children. How will this work in two worlds? Thank you for the comprehensive information. Well, it's interesting. How, how will this all work? Uh, two different worlds, uh, two different levels of consciousness. First, you're not even going to notice it. Uh, you're just not. I mean, it, it'll all be kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, ubiquitous altogether. And then one day you realize, I, there are, I'm existing in two worlds at the same time, and I can choose more of this over here, more of that over there. Others are still going to see you as kind of as they saw you. They'll notice that something changed about you, but it's not like suddenly your whole body is going to be totally different. They're still going to kind of see you that way. Um, they might see you as being a little bit younger, having a little bit more vitality, but the reason why they're not seeing something totally different is because when they see you, they're really seeing their own energy. So they're going to continue to see the, you the way they have and want to see you. When you see yourself, uh, and Calder is saying you mean in a mirror, not really because you're not going to show up in a mirror, but when you see yourself, when you perceive yourself, you're going to perceive yourself as being very, very different. A lot of the physical characteristics you have right now will change. Uh, your energy level is going to change. Uh, you're going to feel very, very different. But that doesn't mean that uh, family and friends are going to see you a lot differently. You're going to be walking in both worlds at the same time, and sometimes not actually really totally aware of which one it is, um, at least for a little while. Then you become much more aware of the difference between them. Uh, things like um, uh, you say, you know, do I transfer all your money in your house to your kids? Uh, no need for that. You're still going to be here. You're still going to have to. The the human part of you is still going to have to uh, use a car, uh, have money for groceries and things like that. Particularly as you integrate with this uh, more enlightened part of you, uh, you don't need to go out and make any big rash changes right now. Uh, just don't don't even think that way. It's the it's the human thinking and, and maybe even fearing a little bit what's going to happen. You don't need to do any of that. It's all being lined up by your own energy to be perfect in that moment. So right now, the biggest thing you can do for yourself is take a deep breath and allow. That's it. We're still in, in our allowing phase with Shambra. Uh, we've got a little ways to go on that. Uh, then we'll get into other things like, uh, oh, I don't even want to go there, but beyond love and many other things. But right now, we're still in allowing. Uh, don't worry about all these little details. They're, they're insignificant. Can you mention something about time? Somewhere I read that now 24 hours is objectively 16 hours or maybe even less. Hmm. Everyone observes that time is getting shorter. Where is all this headed? Is it the fact that people realize that time is only an artificial creation and only the eternal now, with capital letters, is real and we should 
live in the present moment. Well, living in the present moment is always good. Um, and the present moment also includes the past and the future. Um, time is a human construct. Uh, it's based on a lot of factors, but it's going to be around for a long time. Uh, it's kind sure. of a pun. Time is going to be around for a long time. The it's you're going to have day for your own personal life. You're going to have days where that seem like 16 hours and days that seem like 60 <laughs> hours. Um, the important thing for you to know is don't worry about the rest of the planet on time. They're going to stay on the same uh, kind of the whole Gregorian calendar and time scientific uh, time basis that they're on for quite a while. The most important thing for you to realize is that. It's time for you to allow time to serve you rather than you being a slave to time. Literally, you can slow it down or speed it up. And just imagine, um, think of it this way: you're 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 in a uh, shopping center, and there's a lot of other people there, and you're all on the same time basis. The movement of bodies and energies and everything else is all time synchronized. But suddenly, you slip out of time, and suddenly. You're going a lot slower, but they're still moving at a faster time speed than you are. It's kind of fun to play that game. I've done it many times. Now, then you say, "No, I want to go faster in time." And suddenly, you're going faster, and they all slow down. And all of a sudden, you realize what a great uh, experience and game time really is. And now you let it serve you. You're going to have days that you really want to get done with quickly, so you speed up time, and other days that you want to savor, so you slow it down. Yeah. So, um, in answer to the question, it's going to be around on this planet for a long time, but you can let time serve you now. Hmm. Good. You mentioned a lot about allowing. Much of this mm. is absolutely clear, yet some things for me are not quite clear. For example, saying that I am allowing when really I feel. I'm feeling inner resistance does not mm. change anything. The same as saying, I allow myself to allow the master. For me, these are just certain thoughts in my head. In my experience, allowing is learning to say yes to everything that I feel or experience at any given moment, even if I would allow or say that I feel resistance or that do not allow it at all. Is allowing when in fact I do not allow it's still allowing. Can you comment on this long sentence? Sorry. Mm, yeah. Uh, let's really simplify allowing here. Uh, number one, you're human in experience, uh, coming to realization. It is not the human who is doing the realizing. The human can only allow it. Uh, it's you are not doing your realization. You couldn't, uh, nor should you, nor nor should you have that responsibility on your shoulders. You can only allow it. You can open up to it. Or you can choose to resist it, or a little bit of both. There is a direct link between your openness to yourself, no, not to anything else, but your allowing of this whole process of going into enlightenment. There's a direct link to that uh, and the resistance that, that, you're, that you're doing. For instance, just the, the question itself was very, very mental and very resistive. Uh, and kind of combative, uh, not with me, but just with yourself. So you're going to be feeling physical pain and, and mental pain, but mostly physical. The uh, we will do a, a master's pause pretty soon on um, on comforting and phys uh, the physical pain. But any resistance will cause a degree of physical or mental emotional pain uh, because there's resistance. There's something stopping a natural flow, and some people like it. No, and, and I, I mean that uh, very, very clearly. Some people like it because they have to feel in their body that something's happening for them to think anything's happening. So they bring on the pain in order to make themselves think, oh, I'm really doing something while they're doing a suffering, and, and, but yet they believe they're, they're doing it. Just stop for a moment. You're, you are the human facet of the I am. The I am isn't off somewhere else. It's right here. And you're the human facet, and there's also the master. The human is responsible for the experience. In other words, going through the experience. 
your 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 book uh, is the the experience. Uh, you write a book, and it's you know everything I learned uh, on the way to enlightenment. That's the experience. But you're not responsible for doing it, uh, for initiating, for uh, having uh, realization. That comes f- straight from the I am. Stop thinking that you have to do it. Allow it to come to you. Allow the changes to be in your life. Allow the dynamics that get you beyond the mind to happen. But you're not going to do it yourself. You're not going to get out of your own mind. It's all about allowing. It couldn't be any simpler, but yet even Chambra uh, make it difficult. It couldn't be any easier than saying, hey, I am, I allow. And then go about your business the rest of the day. Stop thinking about it. Stop worrying about it. Just every once in a while, take a deep breath. I allow all that I am. That's it. That's it. And it's not allowing the world to walk all over you. It's some chamber of thought. I thought that was strange. It's allowing all that you are. Period. Go on with your experience and allow now the integration of the entire, the I am, the Master, everything else, allow your realization, but don't work at it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't go teaching some damn class about it, uh, because you're not there yet. Just allow. That's it. Uh, It doesn't really, I don't don't know what is simpler uh, than allowing, but yet you want to make it difficult. Take a deep breath right now, all of you. Take a good deep breath and allow. That's it. You know, think about it. And just, oh, okay. I open up to all that I am. I'm the chalice. I receive the, the, all these great gifts or whatever. Allow, and then get back to whatever you were doing. Don't, don't think about it. Don't worry about it. Don't try to manipulate it. You take a deep breath and allow. And allowing means also don't try to define it in a time frame that you think needs, it needs to be defined in. It will happen in the right time. Allowing means don't try to tell it what to do. Don't try to control it. Allowing just means allowing, opening up. Then get back to experiencing life. That's it. And what a great way to end our great session with all of Chambra uh, in Poland in particular. I know many uh, others of you are, are watching. I don't often take questions and answers because they're generally filled with a lot of macchio, but uh, this surprisingly had very, very little macchio to it. Uh, some mental to it, but very little macchio. Let's take a, a good deep breath as you allow your natural being, your natural state of being, which is that of what you call enlightenment or realization. I'm honored that um, to come back to all of you. And I appreciate uh, all of those who at White Winds Publishing appreciate the effort of Crimson Circle and uh, particularly of Caldra and Linda on this day. Let's take one more good deep breath into allowing. And with that, I am Adamus of Sovereign Domain. So with that, please take the good deep breath and really feel into Adamus' answers to all these questions, not just the words, but the energy of it and what it means to you. Truly breathe that in, in honor of you, and allow it. Stay with the good deep breath of allowing. So often the only key he gives us is allowing. Stay with that. Stay with the good deep breath of allowing. Thank you so much for sending in the questions. We got through as many as we could, and we thank you again. Thank you to Adama Saint-Germain. So with that, thank you everyone for being here with us.